Give us your perspective on what's going on with the jobs claims. As I say, they went down, although there's some change in the methodology of how they're calculated, right? Yes. The, uh, well, there's been a seasonal issue because these, uh, this forced shutdown, this pandemic contraction, it's the most unusual recession, if you want to call it that, we've ever had. It certainly wasn't the result of, uh, of economics. The economy w was excellent. But the thing is it destroyed the seasonal patterns in the data, the, the normal patterns you see intra year those, uh, those uh, were changed, and, uh, and therefore the data have, have been distorted because of it. The good news, though, is that the trends in the data, and this was the case even before these adjustments, the trends in the data were meaningfully lower. Uh, you've had great progress made on claims. There's more work that needs to be done. The president is working uh, tirelessly on that. We could discuss that more. The continuing claims data, which don't really get captured uh, much in the press, uh, they're down um, significantly, uh, 10 million or so, uh, from almost 10 million or so from where they were back in May. And that's a very good sign that the labor market is healing further, that the unemployment rate is likely to drop. So there's a lot of good labor news, despite how we might technically adjust this data to better account for what's happened. Tomorrow's a big number, the, the jobs numbers. Are you going to make a prediction here as you talk about what's going on with the labor market? The, uh, the nice, one of the great parts of my job is not being in the private sector. I don't have to give a <laughs> forecast. What I can tell you is the street is looking for a, another sizable gain on private jobs, well over a million. Uh, what we've been arguing is that the president's policies have gotten the economy back uh, much faster than people thought. The uh, private sector economists, David, uh, were looking for job growth significantly less than what's happened over the past three months. About 12 million more jobs have been created than what people were looking for. Unemployment's come down. So I would say that the broad trends look great. You've got a housing boom. You've got a manufacturing boom. We had very strong uh, auto sales this week. Production is uh, set to, uh, to go up uh, over 200 percent this quarter. Those are all great signs that good jobs are coming back for middle America and that the economy, regardless of what tomorrow's numbers shows, and I'm optimistic they'll look good, but the broader trends just to me look great. No question the trends are in the right direction. At the same time, we have this issue called the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program, which would indicate that you've got a continuing problem, even a growing problem when it comes to gig workers and the self-employed. Are you worried about that? I'm, well, if you're talking about those industries, you've got very onerous uh, business regulation in places like California, which run completely counter to the president's policies, who's been very pro-business, trying to deregulate trying to put rules and safety in place where it makes the most sense to protect people and protect livelihoods. So I would say if you're worried about the gig economy, I focus more on sort of local politics in California where it's been a problem. We got another number out today, which is the trade balance, uh, which was not good news at all. I think it's the highest deficit that we've had in something like 12 years, a long time. What's going on there? This was a terribly important issue to President Trump as he came to office. Seems to be going in the wrong direction. Yeah, I mean, look, the numbers are very volatile month to month. The, the fact is the economy has, has come back very quickly. And what's happened is inventories have been drawn down. We've had to import to meet that demand. The good news is, I alluded to with autos, the production you're seeing there, you're also seeing it more broad-based in the economy elsewhere. You're seeing a big surge in production. That's going to put goods back on the shelves. Uh, a lot of those goods are going to be domestically sourced. And you're going to see those trade numbers, David, come in quite significantly in the next few months. So, Joe, you mentioned before the construction, uh, the boom, as we can call it that, in construction, also the pickup in manufacturing. At the same time, an awful lot of the economy is tied to services. Are you concerned that if we get the, the jobs back in manufacturing and in construction, that's going to make not make up for the enormous amount of number of jobs in the services part of the economy? I'm not, in part because the economy is very dynamic. Uh, I alluded to the fact that we're recovering much faster than people, people have thought, so that speaks to part of that story. The other thing is we're creating a lot of new jobs and a lot of new industries uh, post-pandemic, so I'm pretty confident that with the right policies, the president's policies of pro-growth, you're going to get a lot of these jobs back. And let me also add that in today's ISM services category, we saw a further large jump in the, in the employment component, up, up six points. It's recovered three-quarters of its pandemic-related drop. It's actually higher than where it was in March. And that, to me, David, is a very good sign that we're going to get a lot of these service sector jobs back, especially as the economy reopens because we're seeing our mitigation efforts working, cases are dropping, and, and hopefully the news that we that we've been hearing about with therapeutics and vaccines is coming soon. And that would be great news. And that's going to get people back safely and productively. Joe, Joe, you've mentioned a couple of times the president's plans for a second term and what that would do for jobs. I want to give you that opportunity to explain what that is. We saw the convention last week. There are a lot of bold promises made in terms of creation of new jobs. 
How is that going to get done? Is that going to be more tax cuts? Can you get all the way there with deregulation? Well, we've had, it's, it's all a bunch of things all tied in together. So it's creating a very pro-business backdrop. That's through the reduction in marginal rates, accelerated expensing, uh, corporate tax rates that sort of level the playing field to our international competitors. And it's been deregulation and trying to get American jobs back. And that's why if you look at the energy industry, for example, to become energy independent and have a very productive manufacturing sector where businesses are incentivized to relocate here or to maintain production here, that all kind of works hand in hand. But I would say if you're looking uh, at the equity market, you've seen this massive recovery. The market is forward looking. The market, to my mind, is, is anticipating these pro-growth policies to, to, to continue, which is why, David, if you look at private sector forecasts and where they've got GDP in the second half of this year and where they're estimating growth to be next year, we're going to recover all of the pandemic-related contraction by early 2021. So to me, the president's, uh, his indomitable optimism is very uh, justified in the numbers and what financial markets are telling us.